In the previous video, we introduced the concepts of independent events and also mutually exclusive events. Now, these are two very important topics because they are critical to understanding the multiplication and addition rules of probabilities. The multiplication rule states that if the two events, A and B, are independent, you can multiply their probabilities to see the chances of both of them happening. Now, the addition rule states that if A and B are mutually exclusive, you can then add their probabilities to see the chances of one or the other one happening in one um, event. But if they're not mutually exclusive, you do have to subtract their overlapping possibilities for duplication. Now, in this first video, we're going to talk exclusively about rolling dice. And we've rolled dice before, and in games Monopoly, at the blackjack table, or sorry, at the craps table in a casino, they've rolled dice, um, and also in the board game Catan. Now, normally I would write these in, but since I'm going to be doing some drawing and I'm going to need to erase quite often, I'm going to type this in. So one and one make two. That's if you roll snake eyes, where there's one on one die and one on the other. So what if you roll a one? What, what if you roll a one and the other die says two? So you're rolling these two dice at the same time. Now the sums add up to three. Three and one make four. Four and one make five, six, and seven. You'll also notice that we can go down these rows as well. One and two make three. Uh, three and one make four. Four and one make five. Five and one make six. Six and one make seven. You can also go diagonals. So we can notice that the three and one make four, the two and two make four, and the three and one and the one and three make four. Same with the four and one make five, the three and two make five, the two and three make five, and finally the four and one make five. So you can go across the diagonals this way. And I like doing the diagonals up to this row or this diagonal because the seven is the most common roll when you roll two dice. So if you've played the board game Catan and you felt like the robber was happening quite a bit, that's because the there are more ways to roll a seven with two dice than any other way. And you'll notice that there are fewer eights than sevens if we talk about their sums and nines. And again, if you play the board game Catan, if you have properties on tens, elevens, or the twelve, you're not gonna basically have them come up as often as the sixes and eights. So this means that there are a total of 36 ways that you can roll these two dice. Now, this is because rolling the two dice are independent events. And so since there are six ways to roll the first die and six ways to roll the second die, and these are independent, we can multiply these to get the total of 36 outcomes. So n is equal to 36. Now let's talk about the probability of the sum of seven. So I'm gonna use this highlighter to say, what are my chances of rolling a seven? And this diagonal here, which gets through most of my sevens here, there are one, two, three, four, five, six sevens. So the probability of getting a seven is six out of 36. Now six out of 36 can be simplified to one sixth but I would rather you, instead of simplifying the fraction, which obviously one sixth would be really easy to type in into the um, into uh, the online homework, you can also divide the two numbers and get 0.166666 or 0.167 or 16.7%. Now let's look at the probability sum of seven. Now the probability sum of seven, if I use my green highlighter, this would be this 11 and this 11. So if we have the sevens, the one, two, three, four, five, six, sevens to make six out of 36, then getting the sum of seven would be two out of 36, which makes a total of one over 18. Now, if you divide these two numbers, you get 0 0.056, which is 5.6%. Now, let's look at the probability getting a sum of seven or an 11 in one roll. Now let's count up our sevens. Two, three, four, five, six. There are six sevens and two elevens for a total of eight thirty-six. And eight thirty-six, if you uh, reduce that, it would become four ninths, which is, um, oh, excuse me, it would become two ninths, not four ninths. And then that would be 0.2 repeating or 0.222 
which is 22.2%. Which brings this question up. Was the probability of 7 or an 11 a mutually exclusive situation? And the answer was yes, because you'll notice that the green highlighted area and the yellow highlighted area did not overlap. So therefore, yes, these were mutually exclusive. They're getting a probability of 7, getting the probability of 11 doesn't share any common die rolls. So in doing that, you can add probability sum of 7 plus the probability sum of 11 to get probability 7 or 11. See, the 6 out of 36 plus the 2 out of 36 made an 8 out of 36. And then reduce that to 22.2. And if you kind of look at 16.7 and 5.6, if you rounded correctly, it would give you 22.2. Now I'm going to have to erase this to get to our next problem about rolling doubles and rolling the sum of 6. So for this next example, we are going to check to see what happens if we try to roll doubles and roll a sum of six and then see what's the probabilities of rolling doubles or a sum of six. So I'm going to use my highlighter to show you all the doubles. One and one make doubles, two and two, three and three, four and four, five and five, and six and six. These are the chances of rolling doubles. So just like rolling um, a sum of seven, Rolling doubles is 6 out of 36, which we've done before. We can look up at the top of our um, worksheet here and see that that's 16.7%. Now let's roll the sum of 6. Now the sum of 6 is going to be this um, set here, because 5 and 1 make a 6, 4 and 2 make a 6, 3 and 3 make a 6, so I'm putting... I'm putting this highlighting section with this yellow highlighting section here. See? See how it's yellow here as well? Come on. All right. Then we have 2 and 4 make 6, and 1 and 5 make 6. So if we look at just the green sections there, the green sections make 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There are 5 out of 36 ways that you can get a sum of 6. Now if you reduce that, it would be, well, it's unreducible because 5 and 36 cannot be reduced. So this would give you the decimal point 139 or 13.9 percent. Now the probabilities of doubles or a sum of 6. Now let's count these up. There were 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 ways to roll doubles and one, two, three, four, five ways to roll a sum of six. But there are not 11 ways or 11 circles here. There's technically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we don't count this a second time, nine, 10. There are 10, 36, because there's overlap here. There was a shared result where the double or a sum of six had the same result because three and three is a double and three and three is a sum of six. So six plus five would not give us the right answer. The correct answer is 10 out of 36 or five eighteenths, but we can turn that into a decimal of 0.278 or 27.8%. So, was the probabilities or the sum of six mutually exclusive? The answer is no. They were definitely not mutually exclusive because three comma three is in each set. So if we had the probability of rolling uh, doubles as one side of our Venn diagram and the probability of the sum of six was the other side of our Venn diagram Doubles would be 1, 1, 2, 2, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, and the sum of 6, which looked like a G there for a second, but sum of 6, there, I got it fixed. Sum of 6 would then be 1 and 5, 
actually let me not put a comma there just to make things a little bit more similar to the other side one and five five and one four and two two and four and then three and three that would be shared in the middle so these are not mutually exclusive which means that instead of adding up the five plus six you had to then subtract the one overlap to get our answer of 10. Because if you count again, if we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The answer is 10 out of 36. Not 11 out of 36 because we had the 11 then had to subtract the 1. And we're going to see this again in another example near the bottom of the screen or the bottom of your worksheet here at the end of this first video. Now we're going to compare the Venn diagram that we just drew, the probability of doubles or a sum of six, because here's our probability of doubles. Now again, if you have this at the top of your worksheet, you don't need to redraw this, but this is, I'm going to do it down here just so we can see the comparison. I'll put some commas in here just so you can see that way of display. And again, this is what we did at the top of our worksheet here. And this would be 1 and 5, 5 and 1, which are considered different events because the numbers can be different on those dice in that order. But then if we compare the probability of 7 and the probability of 11, so here's probability of the sum of 7, probability sum of 11. So probability sum of 7 is 1 and 6, 6 and 1, 2 and, two and uh, 5, 5 and 2, 3 and 4, 4 and 3. And then 5 and 6 and 6 and 5, you see they have nothing in common. If the events are not mutually exclusive, the formula is just taking the probability of A and adding the probability of B. But if the events, um, oh, I'm sorry, I just did are mutually exclusive. If they're not mutually exclusive, we have to subtract the A intersect B. So I actually did the bottom equation easier. The probability of A plus the probability of B, if they are mutually exclusive, so that was in this situation. But in the second situation, you can see that we had an overlap, so it has to be subtracted. If we don't subtract it, then we, have to, then we get double counting, and double counting is really bad. Now, if you're curious, how come the equation is different if they're mutually exclusive? Notice that you have no subtraction here. Well, the equation is actually the same. It's just that if we have the probability of A intersect B and there's nothing there, then 0 times A intersect B gets simplified to 0 or canceled in your words. So if the events are mutually exclusive, add them up. If the events are not mutually exclusive, you add them up but then subtract whatever overlapped. And you're going to see this employed a lot more in the next video where we leave the world of dice rolling and we play with some cards.